In the last lesson, we learned about polyatomic ions and how polyatomic ions are basically grouped of two or more atoms that bond together, but they function as a single ion with a specific charge. In this case, we're going to learn about how are they being used in a chemical formula, and how does that relate to parentheses and subscripts in chemical formulas. Here I have a list of polyatomic ions that we can reference to, so that way we don't have to memorize it. So let's go back to our topic, which is understand how parentheses and subscript are used in chemical formula. First of all, a parentheses groups polyatomic ions where there are more than one. What does that mean? That means if you have more than one of that polyatomic ions in that chemical formula, we have to use parentheses. So that way we know, hey, we have more than one of this polyatomic ions. Then we have subscript. Think of the prefix sub. Think of subway, right? Subway go under, in this case, subscript is a number below the element symbol. So what does that indicate? A subscript indicates the number of atoms or groups of atoms in a parenthesis. Remember, that group of atoms is your polyatomic ion. Before we look at the example of the chemical formula, we have to define what type of compound we need to look at. In this case, we are going to be specifically looking at ionic compound. Now, all ionic compound is made of a cation, which is a positive charged ion. And we know that positive charged ions are mostly metals, right? and hydrogen that has lost an electron, okay? Or positive polyatomic ions there. And it is followed by an N ions. And again, this ionic compound will always follow this format. Cation followed by an N ion. And N ion are basically negative charged ions. And we know that negative N ions are made of non-metal. And hydrogen that gain one electron. Or if we think in terms of polyatomic ions, here are some possible negative anions. So let's go to some example and look at how parentheses and subscript are used in chemical formula. Let's look at one example. We have sodium chloride. So in this case, it doesn't have a parenthesis or a subscript. But we know when there is no parenthesis, we have to assume that it is 1. So therefore, that has to be 1Na, and we have 1Cl. Then over here, we look at the next example. We have this one, right? Al2O3. That subscript 2 tells you there are 2 of Al and 3 of O. So let's look at a more complicated example. Here we have Ba. It doesn't have a subscript, so we know it's going to be 1. So we have 1Ba. Then all of a sudden we have SO4. So how do we know which one is the N ions? Here's the golden rule. Once you identify your cation, which in most cases is your metal, it was not one of these polyatomic ions. So if this is your cation, the remainder must be an N ions. If they have more than one atom grouped together, that means it is a polyatomic ion. So therefore, this SO4 right here is actually a group of atoms that form a polyatomic ions, which we know over here is sulfate, SO4. But in this case, there are no parentheses, so we assume that there are only one of this polyatomic ions. So we have one of SO4. Let's move on and look at another example. First of all, we know that calcium is your cation. We have one calcium because there are no subscripts. But then all of a sudden, we see the parentheses right here, and also a subscript right there. And after calcium, we have we have a group of elements that combine together. Again, this must be our N ions. And in this case, these N ions are grouped by parentheses and with a subscript too. That tells you there are two of this whole entire group, or two of this polyatomic ions, or two of, in this case, CH3COO. And if we look at the list of polyatomic ions, it's actually acetate. So we have two acetate. Let's look at another complicated example. 
here we have Na2CO3. First of all, we know that this is a metal part, so we have two. Because of that subscript right there, we have two Na, but then it doesn't have a parenthesis. Remember, we have to realize that after the cation, the remainder will be just the anion. In this case, there are no parentheses. We must assume that this whole entire thing, or the remainder part, has to be an anion, which we know, CO3, that will be your carbonate. How many do we have? Since there are no parentheses, we assume that it's only one of these polyatomic ions. So it's one of CO3. So here's our last example. We have Mg3, parentheses, PO4, parentheses, 2. We know that this is our cation. This is magnesium in group 2A. So we have 3 of Mg. But what about this parentheses? So again, the parentheses is used to group polyatomic ions when it has more than one. In this case, which is 2. It has 2 of PO4. So 2 of PO4. And that is how you interpret parentheses and subscript in chemical formulas. So again, the hardest part is to realize that the first one will always be the cations, and whatever after the cation will be the anion.